are. The first part of the story, titled, The Year Was 1444. The year was 1444. I was a young lad back then, a prince about the age of 17. Heir to a small and poor kingdom between here and nowhere. I lived with my father in a little stone house in the center of town. Our kingdom was made up of mostly peasants who had to work hard to sustain a living of either farming or goat herding. However, every now and then we would adopt people from other countries that could no longer support themselves in their homeland. This made life a little easier. These people would often bring with them special skills or talents that our kingdom otherwise would have never seen, as we were so far from anywhere at all. I guess that's where my story begins. You see, it was because of my father's acceptance of people from other nations that determined my fate and the fate of our entire kingdom. It all started when I was walking back to town from a long day of farming the fields in the countryside. I ran into a group of Italians that had recently arrived by sea. They were selling whatever luggage they had on the edge of town. I thought it was fascinating, the things they had for sale. One of the men was in the midst of painting a portrait when I talked up, walked up to talk to him. I introduced myself as Prince Aiden of the Kingdom of Fregonard and, and exclaimed that he could stay for as long as he liked so long as he liked to farm or raise goats. He replied, Ah, but I like to paint. Perhaps his royal highness could use a painter in the king's royal court. I told him that our kingdom was far too poor to afford a painter, and that the king's royal court was nothing more than a, the town road, but that he did rather nice work, and it was a shame he would never get paid full value for his talents. We talked for a while. He introduced himself to me as Jared Botticelli of Italy and told me of his troubles finding work. I thought, what a shame to waste this man's talents. So I asked if he would care to join my father and me for supper and a place to rest for the night. He accepted my invitation and offered to paint my father's portrait in return for my kindness. I thought, what a wonderful gesture. So I returned home with my new friend and we sat down for supper. My father looked at his paintings and agreed. It was a true shame to waste this man's talents, but we just couldn't afford a painter. I told my father that he would paint a portrait of him for a place to spend the night. He was very pleased to hear this and said he could stay as long as it took him. The painter was very pleased to hear this as well, and said he would get started right away in the morning. The next day I woke to find that my father had become very ill and would not be able to get out of bed. So I decided to take the painter on our tour of our little town. Botticelli commented on how poor we lived, and although he was just a painter, perhaps he could help in some small way if my father gave him a position of royal importance. I replied with a heartfelt laugh and told him, I would love to make you the royal painter, and perhaps you could spend the rest of your days here painting for our kingdom. The problem is, I don't even have a place big enough to have someone of such a stature sleep at night. He said if we were, however, to have a place big enough, or perhaps a castle with servants' quarters and stables, then maybe he could be the royal painter. I shook my head and replied with that same spirited laughter. <laughs> you truly are a painter and a dreamer. But even if, if we had all those wonderful things, what would my people do to pay for all of this, if all we have is enough to farm for ourselves? That conversation we had later on would become a blessing and a curse for my father and our people. 
Later on in the evening, I noticed the painter sitting outside, staring up at the sky. I sat down next to him and told him it would be nice to have all those wonderful things, but that we couldn't spend the rest of our lives idly dreaming of them. The painter just kept looking up at the sky, ignoring me and the rest of the world. After some time had passed, he muttered to me that maybe we could have all those wonderful things, if only we dared to dream of them. I then got up and told him we better go to bed. It's going to be a long day tomorrow and that possibly there would be work for him in the fields. That's when I should have gone to sleep. But he told me to sit back down, that he had something in his things he wanted to show me. So I sat back down as he went to retrieve this mysterious item. He came back with the sack and pulled out a wooden box and a painter's palette. I told him it was too late to paint and that there wasn't enough light to see. He laughed and went wet his painter's palette anyways. He then opened his box and pulled out a very fine and clean paintbrush and said, Ah, but what if there was enough light to see? Then I could paint to my heart's desire and then I would not be dreaming. I had a good laugh at this one, but felt sympathetic to this poor old painter who seemed to be down on his luck. What happened next silenced any laughter I may have had the rest of the night. He took his paintbrush and dipped it into some white paint. Then he told me to keep my eyes on the heavens, for shortly there would be enough light to see. I lay back and stared up the stars with him maybe to feel like a daydreamer myself for once in my life. He raised his paintbrush in the air, and with a stroke of inspiration, he placed a spectacular spell of bright blue colors over the sky. In an instant, the stars came alive, luminous amber orbs of light twinkling in a nocturnal dream. The pigments he used were bold and dramatic. His movements were erratic and swift, as he swirled the brush over the mysterious nature of the wind, moving it in a transparent whirl. It was sorcery, I thought, intertwined with his imagination, yet it was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen. He then turned and looked at me with a pleasant smile. This is a magic paintbrush, and I can do all this and more. So, do you still think I am a dream daydreamer, Prince Aiden of the Kingdom of Fragonard? I didn't reply at all. I was awestruck by everything that was happening. That's when he offered me the paintbrush and asked if I would care to be a daydreamer myself for the night and move the stars and the wind as freely as he did. I quickly took him up on this offer. After all, how can one refuse such a wondrous gift to be able to move stars any way one chooses? I was having the time of my life. The rest of the world, though, must have been wondering what was happening to the world above. After a while, he asked for the paintbrush back and replied to my question earlier about there not being enough light to see. He took the tip of his paintbrush and focused on the brightest star in the sky. When it adhered to his brush, he pulled it out of the night and placed it before me. He said something that has always stuck with me over the years. The stars and moon and heavens above have always been and always will be. Yet as great and vast as they are, sometimes we just have to look up to truly know they are there. I then went to sleep beside him in my chair, only to wake up the next day to my father feeling better and standing over me. He asked if my new friend and I planned on going to work in the fields that day. I asked my father what time it was. He said it was almost noon and that he couldn't afford to have a son to rule over his kingdom one day. If he planned on sleeping his life away, daydreaming with every drifter wandering through town looking for work. <laughs> I quickly got up and apologized to my father, as the painter lay there sleeping in content with his dreams. 
My father told me to wake up my new friend and have him help out for the day if I ever planned on finishing my chores. I tried to wake him, but he didn't want, seem to want to get up from his dream. All he wanted to do was sleep the day away in his chair. So my father grabbed a pail of water and threw it on his face. He quickly jumped to his feet and without saying a word, he followed me on my walk to start the day. I'll, I apologized for my father and explained that he meant no harm, but that today we had a lot of chores that needed to get done. When the sun started to settle, I woke the painter and asked if he was ready to go back home. He looked at me in a daze and then got on his feet. On the way home, I remembered all the things that had happened the night before and asked if any of, any of it was real. He replied, Oh yes, it was all quite real, but if I am ever to show you again, I need plenty of sleep so that my mind can wander and paint such wonderful sights in the nighttime sky. I asked him where he obtained his magical paintbrush that did such wonderful things, and so we took a break on the way home, and he told me his story. End scene. I'll see you on the next chapter.